Welcome back to our epic road trip on the NC500. We start where we left it last time, morning coffee at Sango Bay. Good morning, another beautiful day. It's like the sun isn't just out, the sun is warm. I'd be happy with this if it was August down south, I'd be happy with today, and yet we're in Scotland and it is March and it is insanely beautiful. First things first, we stopped off just down the road so that little legs could have a good old walk before we hit the road properly. Then we were off. Let's just appreciate the best bridge on the 500 and I hate heights and I shat myself having to leave the drone behind that far away. I just drove through a really beautiful section. Um, I can't tell you where it was because it's one of those areas that has no signal, there's no data, no phone, the music goes off, everything stops, even the sat nav has uh, wiped out. So I don't know where I am, but it was just so green, so lush, almost like you would imagine a, a ski resort might be, a European ski resort in the summer, uh, like the Swiss Alps. But um, it suddenly changed again now. It's gone back to being more mountainous and barren, but I um, really enjoyed that little section. What's amazing, it's now gone five o'clock. The sun is so bright and still so warm. Literally, window open. What an evening. So it's reached that time now where what I'd like to do is find somewhere to park up and settle in for the night, get some dinner on, get a bit hungry now, and hopefully watch this sunset somewhere over the mountains, over some water, that would be ideal. The salad is for real. So last night's quest to find the perfect park up next to some water. I just had this romantic idea that of course there'd be a babbling brook running past, spilling through the rocks, and a little bit of a tree-lined um, bay that goes down that I had exclusivity to, and at least a little bit of signal to, uh, to get on with some work. That wasn't to be, I ended up driving yet again so through the mountains with zero signal, um, not even sat nav um, strength. So, and trying to race basically the sun going down because I didn't want to be searching for a park up in the dark. We've all done that. And just at the last, there was a car park in the mountains. A couple of other vans were there, just a small little car park. So I thought, do you know what? It may not have the babbling brook, but it did have a lake to the side and it was in the mountains and it was quite beautiful. Obviously I've met, the friendly stag. Um, he did deserve a couple of berries from you know, Lindsay's muesli or whatever is in the back. Um, nice chap. But we are now moving on. Thankfully it looks to be yet another gorgeous day. Sunshine, blue skies and hopefully good temperatures again like we had yesterday. So it should very well be t-shirt weather all day all the way through to sunset. Fingers crossed. 
How insane is this? Like a mirage in the middle of nowhere with a beautiful view. There's a guy with a food truck just in time for coffee and breakfast. Look at this. Let's spin this around. That guy there, that guy there is a godsend. And what a view he has, I'll show you. What a lovely way to start the day. Hey, Blue. That was so good. Really, really enjoyed that. That was good. Compliments to the chef. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely guy as well. From Lithuania originally. Been here for years. I wonder if there was a league of food vendor positions in the country. He's got to be in the top 10 now. What do you reckon? Leave a comment. Let me know if you found better than that. We'll start the league. Fortunately, there's a good scattering of petrol pumps around as well. So as well as the spattering of 24 hour stick your card in fuel pumps that are along the way, there's a number of public loos too. I stopped at this rather scenic one. We are now on the coastal path to the infamous Apple Cross. And I honestly couldn't be more grateful to be doing this in such peace and quiet and tranquility. I can imagine in the summer when it's just van after van after car after car after motorcycle and the constant pulling in in passing places can get a little bit annoying. But this is just bliss. We're just on our own. I'm really looking forward to this section and I'm savouring every mile of this trip. I'm well aware that I'm very, very fortunate to be doing it under these conditions. So I am just taking it all in and really appreciating it. How incredible is that? It's like a really massive sand drift. At first I wondered if you could board down it. Probably could, that'd be amazing. And secondly, I wonder how high up that cliff you could go and jump down and enjoy jumping into deep sand to, uh, to break your fall. That could be fun as well. Let's not forget, there's some right and some Highland Coos along here. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city life. No, no, no. You come all this way and you have one magic moment ruined by a Jag driver. <sighs> Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. Quite enjoyed that. I have to say, I think that's probably easier to drive than it is to be a passenger I would imagine anyway um, not too difficult at all but um, yeah thoroughly enjoyable as a driver but yeah I wouldn't like to uh, to be in the passenger seat
good morning. We're now on a section towards Fort William. Seems odd now being on an A road to actually see traffic again. Uh, not a lot of it still, which is nice, but traffic nevertheless. Uh, first morning I've woken up and it's a little bit overcast. Um, it's not raining, uh, just a little bit overcast. Which, do you know what, apart from the fact that you now can't see forever, it does restrict the, uh, the, the focal length, but it also, now as a photographer, adding clouds into uh, a composition, I like it sometimes. It just adds a little bit of character. I'm quite happy to see a little bit of moodiness. Certainly when uh, I've just passed a castle, we stopped to uh, to take some, some shots to do some video, and it was actually nice to, to see it with that moody essence. The sun did come out, and it did look nice in the sun, but do you know what, I'm gonna to stick to the moody angle on that one, because it's been a week, and it's nice to see a little bit of cloud. If it stays, I'll be pissed, but no, at the moment, I'm, I'm quite happy to see a little bit of difference. and that was a culture shock. Arriving in Fort William, which is a quite a big town, where suddenly you're struck with the big, bold colours and lighting of KFC and Costa Coffee, people everywhere. I'm not ready for that. I am not ready. I haven't acclimatised properly and I can't face a big town yet. So I hot-footed it back into nature, had a look at park for night and found this little gem. If you live in a house, you've no doubt got one of those junk drawers. You know, the one where you chuck all the crap, the sellotape, the drawing pins, a few pens, an old Nokia phone. Well, mine's a junk box and it's on the roof. I needed some more bungee straps to better secure the camera tripod in the cab. So up I went. We seem to be working our way through, well, I'm gonna say it's logging <laughs> territory because I keep coming across these great big logging trucks, which is um, part of the reason that I, I stopped the tripod that I've been using in the front uh, has been working brilliantly well when I'm traveling super slowly around the NC500 because everything's so tiny and wiggly and it was just really stable, it was lovely. Um, now on faster, slightly faster A roads and they're just as windy and just as hilly and they're just as sort of um, menacing at, uh, at moments, plus these great big logging trucks that suddenly come bounding around the corners, they're pretty quick and all. Um, I just wanted more stability, so I had to stop and, um, and strap the, the tripod into place so it's a bit more efficient. And now I'm totally happy with slightly better speeds and, um, and harsher, harsher turning angles without losing the camera over the dog every five minutes. Dumfries and Galloway! Well, I'll tell you something for nothing. It's lovely to be back on little lanes again. After doing A roads and seeing traffic, it's all too much. But this is now slow pace again, sun still blazing. We're on route to a, um, to a park up that's been recommended to us by uh, Jamie at Trek Vans. Now Jamie at Trek is the guy that built this van. I'll leave his details uh, for his Instagram down below. Okay, well as good as 
as that place is, it does actually have a sign, so no overnight camping. Um, I'm sure we'll be okay this time of year. I'm sure it'll get that dark. I won't be seen anyway. But just in case, I'm just going to go along this, um, the shoreline a bit further, just to double check if in case there could be something that is only a moment away, but still could be better or at least more confidence about um, the overnight. got to be something. This is too good of a place to miss. And I want that sunset as well. Before it goes down. Ah, pressure. Got to beat that sun. I've got to settle down before that sun goes down. Come on. Get this done. So on further inspection and re-reading the right up on park tonight, it states clearly that there are cameras that will take note of your registration and issue warnings if you do overnight here, but you know, whether that's true or not, it seems unlikely, where are you going to put a camera? But I can't be bothered, you know, sometimes you just got to make a decision and move on. I just want to relax and um, that's not going to be the case here, so we'll, um, we'll move on. Good morning. So the search for a site became a little bit more difficult. As I left here, it was getting darker and darker and I just couldn't find anywhere appropriate. I knew at some point I'd have to bite the bullet and start moving back down south because I've got to be picking up with Lindsay again this week. So I kept on driving and I ended up five hours later pulling in around midnight to um, Castleton again. So I'm back in the Peak District as a, a good stopover marker. Uh, I've actually been here for a couple of days now. It's been bliss. It's been lovely. There's been so many lovely people around. The weather has been gorgeous. Um, I do need to move on at some point soon. I'm down to my final little brownie. Um, I've still got a few supplies. I'm running low on water, but I could probably scrape another day or so out of this, but um, I'm just gonna suck it and see. So I'm finally on my way to pick up Lindsay. We haven't seen each other for two weeks, which is the longest we've ever gone. Really missed her. Lindsay's back on board. Yes, I am. <laughs> Had a good time? It was amazing. It was absolutely phenomenal. Are you ready to heal the world? I'm ready to heal the world. <laughs> so where to next then, babe? Where are we going to film next? Where are uh, we travelling to? How about, I uh, just just an idea, we do a van tour. A van tour? Yes. It means we have to tidy up. It means we have to tidy up, that's all right. Oh man, uh, okay, van tour. Van tour it is. Van tour. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys and if you want to see more of our van tales you can like and subscribe ring the bell and oh, follow us on Instagram as well and remember guys just do what makes your heart happy bye, bye. see you next week serene tranquility an absolute silence that I can't remember the last time I experienced if I've ever experienced before as a car goes past I swear down, that is the first other car that I've seen in, well, as long as I can remember. That is ridiculous, believe me.